Hello friends, and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! Today I'm painting the Safari Fire Dragon, which I bought at Michael's. This is a pretty cartoony looking dragon, I'll throw a photo up of it here. But the nice things about it is that it's got some pretty good details for uh, a miniature that's not supposed to be necessarily hobby related. And it has a really dynamic pose, which I like a lot. So, it's got a lot of potential. Let's see what we can bring out of it. I've been a big fan of this sculpt for a while. It's one of the first things I painted when I was getting into the hobby. I'll throw a photo up here of my first paint job on it. It's not fantastic. I was using craft paints at the time, which can be difficult to mix and get the consistency that you want. They also have a very chalky finish when they dry, which can be difficult to work around as a uh, beginner painter. I also took a stab at object source lighting, which at the time I had never done before. And in typical fashion for me, I completely overdid it. So it looks a little absurd. <laughs> So as you can see, there's quite a bit to be improved on here, and I like to think I've come a long way in the last few years as a painter, so I'd like to see what I can do to bring this model that I'm so fond of up to my current standards of tabletop quality with better paints and better techniques. So let's just jump right into it and see how it turns out. So before even turning on the camera, I've done a couple things to the model. First is I soaked it in simple green for 24 hours and then I took a toothbrush and scrubbed all of the old paint job off of it to get a good clean slate. I then coated it in Vallejo black primer. For the first step, I'm gonna put my ego in check with some experimentation. I've seen a bunch of painters here on YouTube getting fantastic results with using inks. Scott the Miniature Maniac specifically uses white inks when he Zenithal highlights. So without really thinking about it, I ordered some India inks from Amazon, and I found these to be incredibly confusing. They didn't flow through my airbrush really well, and they coated very poorly, and they pooled quite a lot. My intention here was to get really smooth undercoating with yellow and white inks uh, as highlights to establish some easy object source lighting effects from the fire. This did not work the way that I wanted it to at all, possibly because when Scott refers to inks, he is talking about acrylic inks and not India inks, I really don't know the difference and I'm totally out of my element when it comes to these. Let me know down in the comments if I'm a big dumb idiot and you know better because I, I'd actually really like to know. Anyway, dejected and disappointed, I left this dragon to dry on my shelf for about a month and a half before climbing back on the horse to see this thing through. I'm just going to take some grey and white paints and give this thing a more typical zenithal highlighting method with my airbrush. This is mostly just to make the details easier to see while I'm painting and less to have some amazing undercoating effects. I saw some posts in a video from Chris Spots at The Spotted Painter, I'll put a link in the top right, where he is painting different dragon scale colors with makeup brushes to get smooth blends that really inspired me. As you may know, I recently started painting with makeup brushes to dry brush all of my terrain, and his application with them onto dragon scale made a ton of sense to me. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. So I figured I'd give it the college try. I also thought I could do the object source lighting techniques with the makeup brushes using Chris Spot's techniques. And that would be a really accessible way for you, those of you without airbrushes to replicate some of the object source lighting techniques that are so often used with airbrushes here on uh, painting channels on YouTube. So if this works out, maybe this could be an option for those of you who haven't taken the plunge into buying the airbrush yet. So now that's all behind me, it's time to actually paint this bad boy. For the base coat, I'm going to mix Reaper Gory Red and Imperial Purple. This is going to give a really nice maroon color that will work well for all of the darker areas of the dragon. This is obviously going to be a red dragon, but I find that having the darker areas of the dragon be closer to purple and the lighter highlight areas be more orange and yellow tones gives a really nice contrast and it gives a pretty dynamic color scheme. After banging out the base coat on all the scale areas, I'm going to water down some bone shadow and apply that to the underbelly scales on the necks and body. Once that's dry, I'm gonna pull out my makeup brushes and start dry brushing some aged bone onto all of the areas that I just coated with bone shadow. This gives a pretty natural highlight to all of those scales. After that, I'm gonna further highlight with some linen white. Same technique, but less coverage. Now I'm gonna work on the red scales. 
I'm going to start by taking gory red and dry brushing that from a downward angle onto all of the areas that I have coated with my maroon base coat. Then I'm going to do the same thing with a series of brighter reds, oranges, and yellows, each time going for less and less coverage to establish a nice gradient transition, starting with fresh blood as my first paint. Then I'm moving on to Phoenix Red and eventually Lava Orange. As I start to move into the oranges and yellows, I'm going to pay more attention to the areas that would be receiving light from the flames. For the reds, I was mostly concerned about the light source coming from above, but the largest light source here is definitely the flames, and they would have a big impact on the other heads and the chest. So I want to capture that with my yellow highlights. So like I said, the next color is Lava Orange, and I'm gonna mix it with some marigold yellow. Like I said before, this is gonna be the first step here where I'm focusing on the light being admitted from the flames. For my brightest yellow, I'm gonna be using Golden Glow, and then eventually Golden Glow mixed with some linen white. This really sells the flame effect, and the makeup brushes do a fantastic job of blending these colors together seamlessly. One important thing to take note of is that when dry brushing in this way, I am brushing away from the source of the light so that I don't get any paint in the recesses that would be in the shadows. If you brush in the wrong direction, it just won't look quite right. I'm also putting some highlights on the backside of the dragon that are unrelated to the flame. This is because I want to capture some of those details, but I won't be taking them nearly as bright as the highlights on the other side of the dragon. At this point, I realize I probably should have base coated the mouths before painting the object source lighting, but it's not so bad because I need to take out all of those fire colors again when I paint the flame itself, and I will just touch up the mouths at that point. So, like I said, I'm going to paint all of the inside of the mouths. For this, I'm going to make a dark pink, and to do that, I'm going to mix equal parts gory red with breast cancer pink from Reaper. While that's drying, I'm going to stay productive and paint all of the horns and claws with coal black. This is my favorite of all the Reaper paints. It goes on so silky smooth, and the coal black here specifically does a really awesome job of making all of the reds and oranges really pop out. By this point, all the mouths have dried, and I'm going to paint all of the teeth with bone shadow. After that, I'm going to base coat the flame itself with pure white. This will let us make sure that it lives up to being the bright light source that we have set it up to be. While that's drying, I'm going to take the leftover bone shadow and dry brush some highlights onto everything that we just coated with coal black. To pump that highlight up even more, I'm going to mix some cloudy gray in with the bone shadow and then dry brush that onto only the brightest areas of the horns and spines. By this point, the teeth have all dried and I'm going to dry brush them with aged bone. I'm pretty happy with that. At this point, it is very important to consult your art director to determine if you have made the proper choices up until this point. Upon consulting with your art director to determine that you have made the correct choices, you can proceed forward with the rest of the paint job. I'm going to coat the entire flame with golden glow. Remember, fire is a light source, so at its core it will be the brightest, and it will get darker at the edges, so it is backwards to everything else you paint. With that in mind, I'm going to mix some pure white into my golden glow, and then paint that directly into all of the folds and crevices of the sculpts of the fire. These will be my brightest areas. Once that's dry, I'm going to pull out my makeup brushes and repeat all of the steps that I did before on the scales, this time on the fire itself and the newly painted mouths. Making sure that the core of the fire is bright and the outsides turn more orange and red and eventually I will dry brush the tips with coal black. I'm also going to take this chance to add some yellow highlights to the horns and spines that are close to the flames. To further emphasize the highlights, I'm going to use Army Painter Purple Wash, mixed with some Flow Improver to dilute it roughly 50-50. And I'm going to specifically paint it into the recesses of all of the scales and folds of the dragon's body. All of our darkest areas of red receive some of this wash. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry overnight, and when I come back the next day, it's time for the eyes. I'm going to paint these yellow with some more golden glow. 
While they are still wet, I'm gonna mix some white into my golden glow to make an even lighter yellow. And then I'm just gonna dab a drop of that onto the direction that the eyes are facing. Once that's dried up, I'm gonna grab a small pointed brush and paint some cat-like pupils with coal black. Now we are more or less done painting the dragon and it's time to build this boy a base. I'm gonna start with a six inch wooden circle that I bought at the dollar store. I like the wooden circles over something like MDF or cardstock because it's much more sturdy and it's less likely to warp. I'm gonna trace out the wooden circle onto a cork sheet, also from the dollar store, and then cut it out with an X-Acto blade. Once it's cut out, I'm gonna paint a layer of glue onto the wooden base and then place the cork on top of it. While it is still wet, I'm gonna completely coat the cork base in white glue. This is going to eventually dry pretty solid and it's gonna help hold this thing firmly together. I have the intention of making this base look like it is mostly lava with the dragon standing on some protruding rocks. So I will break up some more chunks of cork to line up with the dragon's feet and then place them onto the still wet cork circle. Next, I will coat all of those rock pieces with more white glue. I'm gonna set that aside to dry in front of a fan for a few hours. And once it is mostly dry, I'm gonna take it and then cover it, uh, place a bunch of my D&D books on top of it to make sure that none of the moisture of the glue warps either the cork or the wood because I can't stand it when my bases warp. Uh, and just because of how large this one is, it is much more likely to do so. The smaller cork bases, there's no risk of warping. The larger you get, uh, especially with like any material that soaks up moisture, the more prone it is to like the corners peeling up or, or going down. So to avoid that, I'm just gonna crush it with books once it's dry enough that I don't think I'm gonna get glue all over everything else. Once that's completely dry, I'm gonna test fit my dragon's feet and roughly mark out where they fall with a silver sharpie. Now I know to avoid those areas when I add rocks and baking soda to the base. I'm gonna use super glue and place it directly onto the base and then sprinkle rocks into it and cover any exposed glue areas with baking soda. The baking soda helps solidify the glue really fast. It also adds another extra bit of texture that is a uh, realistic grain size to be like sand. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna add a lava texture to all the lower areas of the base. For this, I'm gonna channel my inner DM Scotty and draw on a thin layer of hot glue in a circular motion. Now I'm gonna coat this whole thing in Vallejo primer. This is mostly because hot glue does not take paint very well at all and I don't want any paint peeling off of this, undoing all of my hard work. Once that's dry, I'm gonna start with the stone. I want to contrast the lava with some cooler tones, so I'm gonna mix some blue and gray together for the initial coat on the stone, and I'm just gonna dry brush that directly onto the black. After that, I'm gonna selectively add some dark taupe to various areas of the stone for some more color diversity and then dry brush the highlights with a suede. After that, I will hit only the most highlighted areas with vanilla. This is quickly becoming my favorite method of painting stone. It has enough diversity to look realistic without adding too many browns. A lot of other crafters add a lot of brown to their stone, and while that may be more realistic, I just don't like it. I don't have a good reason, but I'm just not into it. So I like this method a lot better. Once the stone is complete, I'm gonna base coat all the lava with vanilla. This is for the same reason as the flame. The bright colors won't go directly onto the black very well, and after this, I'm basically gonna replicate the exact same techniques I used on the fire, just with craft paints instead of model paints, because I don't wanna waste them on this large of an area. Remember, the, the painting order here is bright yellow base coat, yellow dry brush, yellow orange dry brush, orange dry brush, red orange dry brush, red dry brush, and then very gentle black dry brush. Once I start to get into the red and orange red territory, I'm gonna start hitting the edges of the stones to make them look like they are glowing hot and even partially melting. This really provides a nice contrast with the blue tones in the middle, but also helps sell the effect of the lava. Once I'm happy with the base, I'm gonna repaint the rim black 
and start working on pinning my dragon. If you've never pinned before, it's super easy. You just need a few things. Super glue, some metal wire or paper clips, and a small hand drill. Other things that could help you out here are accelerant and uh, a pair of wire cutters, but other than that, it's very, very entry level. First, I drill holes in the feet that I want to pin to the base, and then I cut lengths of wire to test fit. Then I put a drop of super glue in the drilled hole and insert the wire. After inserting, I spray it with some accelerators to save time, but that's totally optional. After I've pinned a few of the feet, I mark with a pencil on the base where those pins will go, and then I drill holes into the base with the same bit. These holes are much easier to drill as the base is just cork and white glue. Be careful not to drill all the way through the wood though. After I have my holes, I just cover the feet and pins with super glue and then press it together with the base. I'm also gonna use some accelerant here for good measure. This is really gonna help him keep secure on that base and make sure that he doesn't peel off pulling any of the cork with him or the paint or it just, the pins help here, trust me. As a final finishing touch, I'm gonna grab some of the reds and oranges that I used when initially painting the dragon and I'm gonna start dry brushing his underside from an, uh, a down to up angle. This is gonna be to try and replicate some of the light and heat that would be coming off of the lava. This is a quick and easy step to help integrate the dragon with the base, and I really think it does a lot to sell the effect, especially on his chest. And that's it friends, that's all there is to my three-headed fire dragon. Here's what it looks like when it's totally complete. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I hope you enjoyed the process. I think sometimes it can get really easy to compare yourself to other people posting photos or videos of, of their paint jobs, and I think it's important to reflect every once in a while and take a look at the progress you've made. Because at the end of the day, the only person you're racing against is yourself, and you're just going to blow your players away no matter what you put on the table in front of them. So just take stock of that every once in a while. Sometimes I get comments from you guys bashing your own ability, saying that you can't paint or craft like I am here on this channel, and I don't want you to have that attitude. I hope this video goes to show you that I'm just a dude who's trying to figure things out in his own way, and at the start I sucked just like everyone sucks at the beginning. And by some people's standards I'm sure they would say I still suck. But I'm gonna keep painting and I'm gonna keep trying new techniques and I'm gonna keep trying to figure out ways that I can improve my process, and I know that you can do that too. I believe in you guys, and you just gotta believe in you too. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, I have plenty of other painting and crafting videos that you can check out. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.